Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Suzanne Verbrudge. In her words, last year, August 1st, 2022 was D-Day. I was betrayed by the person I loved and trusted with my life. We'd been high school sweethearts. I've known him my whole life. At 57, I had to start my life completely over. I have three children, three boys. I was married before for 20 years, and I'm still on very good terms with my ex and father of my children. I've lived in six countries and speak five languages. I'm a photographer. I was never married to my last partner, but we had a cohabitation agreement. I came to live in Aruba with him. He was married before and his life was turbulent as he had an extramarital child and told me about it when we got together. We had a good relationship. He was a bit different, but I loved him just the way he was. August 1st, 2022, all of that came to a standstill after one phone call. I found out he had a double, even a triple life with different women, and that nice man I thought I knew turned into someone I didn't know at all. That's when I entered PBT, and that's when life changed. If you're healing from a painful relationship, from a toxic narcissist, there's a lot to heal from. Besides being blindsided by a betrayal, these types are often so manipulative, you can really think you're going crazy. Well, I'm here today with one of our amazing PBT members, Susie who's been there and back from a relationship just like this. She's going to share her story. And when you hear about all she's moved through in such a short period of time, I'm hoping it inspires you to do the same. Here we go. Okay, everybody, you are in for such a special treat. I brought in one of our rock star members. They're all amazing within the PBT Institute, but I specifically brought Susie in because she has done the work and I want you to see what happens when you strategically and effectively move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. And Susie has done that. And so I wanted to introduce you to her so that you know what she's done and you could do it too. Welcome, Susie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you here because... I remember, I'll, I'll never forget that first day, the first day we met and the first session we had, and you weren't even sleeping, right? It was, yeah. Can you, just so everybody understands, can you give a share to what extent you're comfortable, your story of what brought you to PBT? Yes. I, just a very quick story. Yes. I was married for 20 years. And after I, we grew apart, I'm still very good with my ex-husband, father of my three boys. After doing the divorce, I met up again with my first boyfriend that I've known since I'm 13 years old. We went through high school together and then around, I think, 19 years we split, but we always stayed in contact as well. Our families, my mom and his mom, very well, good friends. So over the years, we knew a little bit from each other, but not that we saw each other a lot or we didn't even have contact for many years. So after the divorce, we got in contact again. I was living in New York and he was coming and going for work and then that something happened. And then anyway, long story short, he was still married. And I said to him, I'm not going to start with a married man. So I broke it off. And I continued and I had to work. You know, I was just divorced, three young kids, and I was just working very hard to get and financially independent again. Well, you know how it goes. And by my place again. Anyway, he got divorced and he came back in my life. I stayed a bit in, in the U.S. as my youngest son was still young and I wasn't feeling comfortable as I, he had a past of living double lives. And he promised me that would never happen again as it was very stressful. And he had a child, extramarital child, that no one knew about. He didn't even tell his wife when he got divorced. He just used me telling that he loved me while well, I wasn't even with him, you know? So it was never him, basically. And, I want, and, and I'm going to stop you right there because here's where this is one of those perfect things where when we look back, we're like, I, you know, there it was, but we get love bombs and we just, you know, we have the love goggles on and we yeah. just don't, we don't see it or we think, we believe, okay, truly that's in the past and people can change. So you assumed that was the case. Okay. And yeah, the love bombing, the love bombing was like, I felt he was like a prince, you know, on a white horse coming in, you know, because 
he, I was getting flowers. He was surprising me. He was infiltrating in my friends. When I was going to a friend, I arrived and it was his big things of flowers at work. It was crazy, surprising me, surprise everything. He knew what I loved. He knew me my whole life, so he knew exactly how to do it. And I thought I was really special. <laughs> I thought you I are, but in this context, yeah. it's being, and this is classic of what, you know, a gaslighter will do. They know what you like and they pour it on. It's like, that's the drug. That's the drug. So, and I felt very special and I thought, man, how, and he's a, a, a person that has money. And he said, so don't worry, you work very hard here. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. But I'm, I always thank God. I always worked here as well. So basically now when I arrived here, things changed a bit already. So he was- And you picked up, like you just, you picked up, you left the familiar, the comfortable, the money, the ever, okay. To just start something new. Yes. And arriving in Aruba, of course, it's a very small community. People looked at me like I was the person that broke up his marriage. (laughs) And I was treated like that and along, you know, along the way, but- as I lived in different countries, I at a certain point, I go like, you know, I know who I am and whoever wants to believe that it's fine. You know, I live my life, but I lived in a cocoon because I was not from Aruba. I was born in Curacao. I don't have family here or only had one cousin. I lived in his in his web, I call it now, but in his cocoon. And I, we did everything together, everything. So I had some friends, but we, I mean, we did everything together. We traveled together with everything. He was my best friend. He was my lover, my husband, my confidant, my everything. Okay. So, (laughs) yeah. And then tell us what happened. Happened. So just, yeah, there there were red flags along the way to tell you the truth that I am a person. I'm very, I have values. I have certain things. The gaslighting started. I I will not even go into details, but the gaslighting started a lot of times. I actually started with a, a life coach. Because I wanted to understand him better. So I said, you know, in, in a relationship, if one person changes a little bit, then the flow goes better. We never had huge problems, but certain things in values and the things that he, he said and did. And, and I've learned to just not say too much, but just to ask questions. Why do you say that? Why does that a person needs to answer you? And if you get mad, they don't, you know, so I've learned that over the way. But anyway. So I go fast forward. I've been living here 10 years. We were on vacation in the Netherlands last year on the 1st of August. And my cousin came to live here in Aruba from the Netherlands to work for him as an F&D manager. And I didn't agree with that. But, you know, it's everyone is adult enough to take their decision. And he started working. And then when we left to go to the Netherlands, we arrived on the 31st. On the 1st of August, I'm at a friend's house. My phone rings over and over and I said, okay, let me pick it up. And it was my cousin. And he said, well, Susie, I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you something. And I find out that he is having an affair with um, a hostess that works for him. And she's like 20 something years younger. And I know her because I worked in a hotel myself in HR. So I knew all the stories and everything. So I- And I'll stop you right there. Everybody remembers that phone call, that awareness, that you know, that D-Day, that discovery mm-hmm. day and yes. life changes, you know, on a dime. And it's, you remember exactly where you were, that yeah. psychological earthquake, you know, it's like it's before it happened, after it happened. And so, you know, your head is spinning. None of this makes sense. Tell us what your experience was and then what happened. Well, my experience was I called him because I thought it was a joke. Okay. I mean, my, I said, my cousin must have it completely wrong. I said, you know, this is a joke. I believe it. You know, well, men can do something, you know, men are men. We all are human beings. We can make mistakes. Or we had, the, I told him, I said, if something happens, if something, because you had your past, if there's, if the love is over, let's be honest about it. You know, that's what we, I'm very honest. And I thought he was in the way as well. But anyway, what I remember is that my heartbeat, when he said, when I called him and he said, well, you should probably spoke to your cousin. I said, yes, it's about everything is true. And I said, everything. So I remember I said, okay. And I hang up. And then the only thing I remember is that my phone called 911 because my heartbeat went so high and it didn't come down for five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that my phone was calling. I needed to stop it because I go like, no, it's not 911 anyway. And after that, everything was a blur because he changed into a person I didn't know. 
I slept at my friend's houses. I needed to like understand what was going on. And the next morning I called him, he picked me up. And this is where everything starts. This is for me, the thing where I noticed this is completely off and I, I was lost there. I went into the car and he said to me, we cannot go to the place we're staying, the apartment where we were staying. He has an apartment in the Netherlands. We're going as my son is working there. I said, fine. We went to like a, a hotel that isn't very close by the house and we had to have like a coffee. And while we're sitting with the coffee, I said to him, can you please explain to me what happened? And he told me, I have nothing to tell you. And I'm looking at him and I said, how can you not have nothing to tell me? I have nothing to tell you. And I'm looking at him and I said, why? He says, I have nothing to tell you. So then suddenly I said, well, I have something to tell you. So I told him what I thought and I'm sitting there and I'm just looking at him and his eyes, everything changed, you know? There yeah. is a look and it's yeah. a different look in someone's eyes, yeah. right? It's like it facially, they just, they change. There's a very different look when someone's just not being honest or gaslighting or just not at all owning up to what they did. And it's so natural for us to think, you know, where was I? Why did I not know? Is it me? All these questions. It's like we get so caught up in thinking. And then when you're met with like what you were with someone who doesn't even take responsibility or ownership and there's no remorse or regret or apology, like it's a very confusing. Uh, I remember him saying something like, you want to work it out. And I looked at him and I said, do you have anything to tell me? And he said, no. And I said, well, then it's over and finished. Because if you have nothing to tell me, I have nothing to continue on this. And then he told me, he said, well, you're not entering the apartment anymore. Go and look for a, a hotel. Here I am on vacation, right? And I said, in a hotel. And I said, I didn't do anything wrong. So at the end, I stayed with friends and my brother drove from Spain 14 hours to come and pick me up. And I stayed in Spain for a long time. He drove back and I had my time, tried to put everything together. So he changed into a person I don't know. Just to let you know, we slept next to each other spooning always. And in that moment, he changed into a person that I don't know who he is. I still don't know who he is. I think I saw the true colors there. Very, very hard for me to come. If you do everything together on a daily basis, I, I like to cook. I was always cooking, having breakfast, lunch, and dinner together, opening up our wine because we love wine. We're sitting, we're talking, and all of that was gone like in a snip of a, a second, moment. And you don't even know what happened. So what did you do to try to make sense of it? And then what led you then to well, EBT and, and tell us, you know, yeah. what your healing process was? So what happened is that I, I could not cry. I was in Spain and I couldn't sleep. I couldn't cry. I couldn't eat. I had this thing in my throat. I and shot my heart the rate was sky high and I could bring it down and at a certain point I said to my brother I need to run because I a lot of times when you run you can you know so I need to do something to try to so I went running up a hill and I went all the way up and when I arrived at the top I was so exhausted I started crying that was my first time and I saw a bridge and I'm standing there and I look at the bridge and I go no I could jump off that bridge and no one knows you know and I'm standing there and I go like, what's wrong with me? Because I've never, ever had anything, even a thought about that. And I said, I need help. I need help because this is not normal. My body went into shock. Everything went into shock. So I walked down crying and crying. I arrived at my brother's house. And then my friend, the person that was actually my life coach, she became like a friend in all of this. And she said to me, Susie, she sent, I have someone, she's very good, and she's a TEDx talker, and she sent me your link, and your talk about betrayal and about being completely blindsided. Yeah, Susie's talking about the TEDx talk called, Do You Have Post-Betrayal Syndrome? Yes, yeah. yes. And this just happened. So I go like, it took me, I stayed almost two weeks in Spain, and when I arrived in Aruba, we actually flew back together. I tried to talk to him. I even in, at the airport where we we're taking the plane, we had a three hour delay. Can you imagine here I am with him? I haven't seen him in two weeks. <laughs> so next to him. I actually thanked him for the beautiful 10 years that we were together. Because for me, there were more, we never had a fight. You know, we had, we, we had disagreements, but there were small disagreements. Actually, in my perception, it was not a bad relationship at all. Mm -hmm. He had weird things that he did, but I accepted him the way he was. He is different, you know? And so I even thanked him and I told him, can you help me? Because your arms are always a safe place for me. 
and he hugged me and he was like, Before we dive into today's episode, we have exciting news for our incredible audience. Brace yourselves for an empowering journey of healing and self-growth this September with our upcoming 21-Day Forgiveness Journey. For 21 days, we'll be sharing insightful stories and powerful strategies to help you master the art of forgiveness. We get it. Forgiveness can be tough. But remember, it's the key to breaking free from the chains of resentment and pain. And it's just a word until you do it. So let's make it happen together. Make these 21 days some of the most transformative of your life. And let's turn forgiveness into a shared, uplifting journey. Sign up at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash forgiveness and grab your handy tracker that we'll be using daily. We're thrilled to take this journey with you. And he hugged me and he was like shaking. And about never when I looked at him and I go like, maybe he's going to open up now. He did something like that. And he, he walked away like I couldn't see his emotions. And he walked and we sat 10 hours or nine hours back in the flight saying nothing to each other. And when the plane landed, he told me, where are you going to sleep? I said, well, at the house, there is a guest room. I'm going to sleep there. But I, anyway, ended up at a friend's house. And the next day I woke up, I said, I'm going back to the house because I didn't do anything wrong. Why should I be sleeping at people's houses while I'm a photographer? I work, I have all my equipment at the house. I cannot be like, I can't. Everything is already a blur in my head. I cannot deal with that. At that point, I have not been sleeping at all. And I didn't sleep for... I think three months, maybe with one hour of sleep. I was just going to say, when Susie's saying she didn't sleep, she really means it. Like one, two hours. Yes. And which did, is um, so incredibly unhealthy for the body. Go on. And then what'd you do next? Yeah. So I called you. <laughs> I sent an email out. I went through a whole process with um, questions, through a questionnaire. And then I sent it out. And I think a week after I got a response, and for a Zoom call. And, and I remember then I, I didn't have power. I had to go in the car and you called me. And then I, that was a funny part is that you called me and I thought it was going to be someone from your office, you know, like, <laughs> then it was you. And I go like, oh, it's her. I'm really surprised when it's me. <laughs> yeah. That's so it's fun. Like, oh, you're calling me. And then I had to tell you the story, but I was only crying, I think, at that point. I couldn't even get my words out. Yeah. And from there, I entered the program. And of course, it was for me. And the I, program I, that Susie's talking about is the Transform program. That's six months where you have chosen to move through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough in six months. So yes, everything within the PBT Institute, the classes, the coaches, everything, but you're bringing me on because, I, and I'm not easy, as you know. No. I am on a mission <laughs> to move Please. people through the stages. Yeah. yeah. So Susie was like, that's it. I'm all in. And we yeah. started with transform. So tell us. So, you know, I remember, like I said, you came in and you, your heart rate was just off the charts. You weren't sleeping. And one of the first things we did was work on sleep. And I remember matching you up with, because we have coaches that specialize in everything, narcissism, divorce, reconciliation, chronic pain, addiction, growth. And I paired you with narcissism, with our narcissism coach, because I wanted you to understand that it's not you but this stuff is so crazy that you think it is. So how did you start? How did you start to kind of unravel this and move through the healing experience? Yeah, I got with a coach. She's the best. I sat and I spoke to her and, and she was telling me, well, it sounds like he's a narcissist. And I go like, I don't like to label people here. I am still defending, right? But like, no, he's a little bit different, but I don't think he's a narcissist. Susie, listen, this is the book. You're going to download it. Are you going to buy it? And you're going to read the book is The Covert Narcissist. So I started reading the book and she said, I want you to highlight, I'm laughing right now. Now I can laugh about it, thank God. She said, you have to highlight the book and then when it's finished, we'll talk about it and see how much of the book is highlighted, you know, how you're still, how you feel about it. So, okay. So I read the book and I'm highlighting and I'm highlighting and the deeper I went into the book, the harder it was for me to read it. And I was crying. I had to stop. My heartbeat went up. There are certain points that I just put the book down and I did not read it for 10 days. And I, I just couldn't. And then all the questions, why didn't I see this? I didn't even know anything about narcissism. I didn't know anything. I could just not, but there you go again. Why didn't I see it? Am I that stupid? How, you know, all of this. 
at the end, the book was highlighted 85%. I bought, I have a Kindle, thank God, because with that, with a Kindle, I could export all the notes and I, I read it back from time to time when I need it. And those notes were a lifesaver. And also from there, when you know that it's not you, you can work on a lot of things. I started with you and with a coach, coaches, because I had two. Uh, working on my sleeping and really working on self-love. And when did you start to feel differently, like a little healthier, a little more healed, a little bit stronger? A little bit stronger. I think in the third month, mm -hmm. in the third month, I started to get through trying to making more sense. Of course, I'm going through your program and here I'm learning everything over the last past 10 years. So when I've learned all of that, of course, he was married before and he had extramarital child. All of that, I started looking back and people, sometimes people say things to you, but I did, I wasn't ready to listen to it. And I go like, oh, why is everyone always talking bad about him? I always ask him that as well. So I went back to these people and I said, now you can talk to me. I'm ready to listen. And I basically what I figured out is that in those 10 years, even when I was in the U.S., he was having double lives. He was always, he always cheated on me. It was not that it was me. It That's his, the way he is. He did it when he was married. He did it. He, he's and always done it. And it's that realization, that awareness that can be the beginning of the healing. And I remember, you know, because one of the things that, you know, in Transform, everybody reaches out and well, the ones who do get the, the best benefit. And you would email sometimes about just realizations and insights and things that you're now seeing so clearly, and it would be like different levels of strength and awareness. And you said something, this was so recently, where, and we have a thing in the PBC as to where you face it, feel it, heal it. Because when you're numbing, when you're avoiding, when you're distracting, sure, it may make the day a bit easier to get through, but not without a price. Do you remember what you said about how you got through it, what you didn't take? Oh, ha. I didn't take any sleeping pills. I didn't take any antidepressants. I love wine. I stopped drinking wine. <laughs> I stopped drinking alcohol. And I was working out. I was walking a lot, not even running, because running my heartbeat, my hormone levels were high already, the stress hormone. So I tried to, so I was walking 10K, 11K in the morning with a friend. And that's the part I'm really proud of. No sleeping pills, because while I was with him, I was not sleeping and he was, you know, I was just sleeping pill. It's fine. So I was taking sleeping pills to sleep already. And then I stopped everything. I just, no medicine, no nothing. And I healed just by self-love, self-care, meditation, yoga, our conversation and the program that I was in, the group chats, the coaches and eating healthy, working out. I think I'm 58 years old. I haven't look this good in a long time. <laughs> and everybody, if you're only listening, you're ripping yourself off. You should look at Susie. She is the most vibrant, beautiful, big hearted, just one of the most beautiful human beings I know. But I want you all to know that the reason why she moved through this as quickly as she did was it was deliberate. It was intentional. She dove in head first and really wanted to make sense out and meaning out of this. And one of the hardest things when it comes to a covert narcissist, it, it's so mind boggling because it's so different than how you think and how yeah. you feel. And we assume that other people are acting the way we do or other people have the same ethics or morals or level of integrity. It's so shocking to realize how different they are. But when you face it head on, just like Susie did, you grow this strength and this personal power. And you heard some of the tools that she used. It was her own sort of recipe and it truly worked. You mentioned something about there was, and I remember you said there was something that I had written or something that yes, about success. Yes. You were an inspiring person. You helped me, Debbie, in, in a lot of ways. I look go back to a lot of the videos because when you go through this, you have to listen to people that went through the same and understand that you're not alone. I felt alone because no one understands. A lot of people around you goes like, oh, what he did to you, just like, snap out of it and just go your life and you continue. When it's a narcissist, that's not like that. You need to reprogram your brain. 
he was in your life all over. You were in his web. You know, it takes time to get out of that. It takes time. So you go through your stages and you do this and then you go a little bit up and then you go down again and then you go up again. But little by little, you're going up and you're getting the strength to get through it. So it is just mind boggling. And the words that I wrote down, I even put it in on my Facebook for New Year's because I thought it was so powerful and it resonates with me as it has the values and the things that I really believe in. I wrote it down and I wanted to tag you and I couldn't. And I finally, I put your name on it as well. well and I would and love I you to share that. And what Susie's talking about is when, you know, I, I went and I did the study on betrayal, what holds us back, what helps us heal and what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive. The study was so, what a game changer it was for me. And I was asked to present at my PhD graduation. So what Susie's going to read was a part of what I presented because my whole definition of success after going through my own betrayal and then going launching myself into this PhD program and making those discoveries, it changed everything I thought I knew. It changed how I look at life. It changed everything. So Susie, could you share that? Yes, I will. What is success? How do you measure success? When you can enjoy the quiet of your own company, when you can easily open your heart for someone in need, when you can think about those we love with a smile that curls your lips in a warmth envelopes your heart, when you can surrender and grow comfortably with the discomfort of the unknown, when you think of giving up, giving in, and going back to the old and familiar, and then refuse and remain on your own journey forward. Success is facing fears, slam your dragons, healing your wounds, and love yourself. Success is thanking your ego to try and protect you as you choose to trust the voice of your inner highest self instead. Success is knowing that even if you have nothing, you have everything you need to create a life that is rich, fulfilling, and beautiful. Success is the outpouring of love from within. And success is you. Susie is a representation of what post-betrayal transformation looks like. I am so grateful that you shared your story with everybody today. What do you want everybody to know as we wrap up? That all the negative things you go through, transform that into something beautiful. Don't go into the negative, go into the positive. I opened up a business. That was my baby. And those nine months, I worked so hard. I woke up, have a routine, wake up in the morning, go for a walk, walking, because that's when all these ideas, you can reading exercises, everything I did. I, of course, I went through difficult times. It's not an easy thing to do. I'm not going to talk and like, oh, I did it very, no, I worked through this. It was harsh. It was not easy. I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But at the end, I opened up a store. I am where I am standing. I do it on my own and I am happy. I'm in a much better place where I, I was. Even now that I can see what I was living in without wanting to see it. And I don't know if I didn't want to see it or I really didn't see it. But now I know that. And you can do it. You can do it. And you have with PBT, like I said, you have a very nice a group of people. All you talk about it and it gives you strength. That's another thing. You help each other and everyone she can do it or he can do it, I can do it. And that helped us as well. Yeah. And thank you for that, Susie. And also, you know, it's so, and I talk about how when we're in stage four and stage five, it is very common to start a new business. We can't do that when we're stuck in our trauma. And not only do you have your, you know, your new business and we're going to link to it in the show notes, but one of the things that Susie did was we had our beautiful, beautiful retreat. And Susie was, she's such an amazing photographer. She did transformational photography for our members who were there. And when they saw, because it is a different look when you transform, you just look so radiant and you're glowing. And if where the betrayal has you looking 10 years older, when you heal, you look 10 years younger. And Susie captured that in the most beautiful way. And I know everybody was so grateful for those photos. So Susie, I'm in awe of who you are, of what you've done in such a short time. You know that saying, hard now, easy later. Easy now, hard later. Take your pick. It's one of those two. When you came into the community, you did nothing less than hard now. And now because of it, you're enjoying 
the beautiful Easy Later. So thank you so much for who you are, for your beauty and your wisdom and your insight and your love. And I know there are plenty of people watching or listening that are saying, wow, you know what? If she did it, maybe I can too. So whoever that person is, I hope you hear this. It is available to you. Not saying it's easy. It is hard, but also the most transformative work you'll ever do. So thank you, Susie. Thank you, Debbie. Isn't Susie amazing? If I were to say what was one of the biggest characteristics she had that allowed her to heal as quickly as she did, I'd say it was her willingness. She had every right to hang on to her pain, but instead she was willing to figure out a way to move through it, and that's exactly what she did. Here's my biggest takeaway. Rebuilding is a choice. Sure, you have your story and you have every right to keep it, but when you're willing to let it go, there's a story so much better that's waiting for you and just waiting to be written. Think about it. Susie went from not sleeping and elevated heart rate anxiety. She was in absolute shock. Instead, she became confident, healthy, happy, strong, empowered, and so much more. She did it by doing what we teach within PBT. Face it, feel it, heal it. And she did it with the loving and inspirational support of others doing the same thing right along with her. Don't stay stuck. Join us at The PBT, as in post betrayal Transformation, ThePBTInstitute.com, and let's get you moving through the five stages from betrayal to breakthrough. It's not just hopeful, it's predictable. So let's get you feeling better. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time, and here's to your breakthrough.